Welcome to this showcase. For the last 500 years, networkers have been facing this very problem. Which cable do I unplug? As I was struggling with this myself, I've built in some stuff into Netty to avoid situations like this. So let's have a look at system export, which actually shows the whole database structure. And let's go down to the interfaces. Of course, we have the device, the interface name, interface index, whether the interface is a link uh, or not. If it is, then we have a link type. So this could be static or stat or LDP or CDP or whatever discovery protocol did discover this link. The interface type is a number defining whether it's Ethernet or serial or something else. The interface MAC address, the description, alias, that's what you usually set yourself as a comment, for example. Interface status is the actual admin and operational status bits. Interface speed, duplex. The PVID or port VLAN ID is the VLAN that's usually untagged on this interface or native VLAN. Then we have absolute counters like in octet, in errors, out octet, out errors. The delta in octet, which means the difference between the current absolute counter and the previous one. Same for in error, out error, and out octets, in discards, out discards, delta in discards, delta out discards, and so forth. And then this is a new field, interface last change, that's actually holding the timestamp when interface status changed for the last time. And this will stay in the database even if the device is being rebooted. We do have a PoE gauge telling us how much power, if the switch provides PoE, how much power is drawn on this interface. Comment is a field that usually is populated by Netty, telling you it's a link again, but in more detail, or if a loop has been detected and other things. Traffic alert, warning and MAC flood are new values and you can see by the defaults they pretty much match the defaults in NetiConf, which will allow you to set per interface thresholds in future versions of Neti. Now let's have a look at device status. First of all, one of the more important indicators is the actual device uptime. This is fetched in real time and gets a check mark if it's more than 24 hours. You'll get an alert sign if it's less. Going down to the interfaces, the first field to look at is the interface status, which is yellow if the link is down but admin status is up. It's green if the link is up and it's red if it's administratively disabled as well. Going over here, we can see how long ago the interface status changed. Now here we can see it's two days and two hours, but as you notice, none of those values will be more or older than the actual switch uptime. So whenever you reboot a switch, you actually lose this information. The same goes for the counters. Even though you see zero bytes here and here, the field itself is blue, indicating that the absolute counter on that interface is bigger than zero, meaning this port has received or sent traffic before, which makes sense because this last change is a lot shorter than the actual switch up time. Down here we can see VLAN 53, which has not been used at all, and you can see there is no traffic on this interface at all. The interface last change here is showing up red because it's less than one day and actually only a few hours ago. Now in addition to get more insight, you could add the nodes seen on those interfaces. And you probably notice again, some fields are showing up with the blue background and some are not. The blue background indicates that this interface is showing up in the IF track table. Meaning if we go back to system export, going down to IF track, any interface highlighted in blue will show up here eventually with an old MAC address, even though this MAC address might not be on that port anymore. So let's go back to device status. If you go up to the actual interface table, we can have a closer look at any interface which is stored in the database. And one of the more recent features 
is the status change field here. And if I'm going to add it to the columns, we can easily see which interfaces have a change detected more recently than others. If it shows up with January 1970, it actually means the value is zero. So there has no change been detected yet. So it's probably a good bet to unplug one of those interfaces. Of course, only if the link here is, is actually down. Now there is yet another feature in Netty which can be used to determine the long time view on an interface and it's hidden in the interface graph. So we get a bunch of interface graphs and as you can see, there is not much going on here. But an interesting one here is the actual status graph. It only works well if you click on single interfaces, so it doesn't really work all that well if you do try to graph a stack, as you can see. But going to this port, and I'm not saying what's connected to this port, but you can see when I'm not working on Netty, because that's usually when this port is up. Anyhow, this can also be shown in device status. Let's go back. If you select this as well, you can have a look at the interface graphs on the switch itself. And again, port 9, for example, is going up and down at certain times, and you're able to track it now. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Bye now.